Yes, this entire film is about a single tool inside the Blurb BookWrite software, a single button, but it's my favorite all-time button, and I'm amazed at how many people don't know it's there. But before we jump into the software and we start looking at that button in particular, there's a couple of things I need to do. I need to set the table. First, I just got an email from the Santa Fe Workshops. June 9th, Sam Abel, who's a legendary photographer for the Geographic and also a legendary workshop instructor, he's giving a seminar about three photographers that changed the face of photography. That's on June 9th. Might want to turn in for that one. It should, it, it should be good. So I need to set the table here before we get into BookWrite. What I'm going to show you in BookWrite is both my wife's magazine that she created while we were in Albania last year and also my magazine. I'm not showing you this to talk about the photography in particular. It's just about using this tool inside BookWrite but I need to set the table in terms of what I was doing there. I actually went to Albania last year at this time. Uh, I was supposed to be back in Albania again this year, but COVID has put a little dent in that. And I was there to take a workshop with Elena Dorfman. And Elena is a high-end fine art photographer from Los Angeles. And when I say high-end fine art photographer, typically what that means is someone who not only makes their living with fine art photography, but is involved with galleries, museums, institutions, collectors, etc. And she's been at this for a long time. She's of, of Albanian descent. So she's been going in and out of the country since it opened up in the early 90s. And she called last year and said, look, Albania is in transition, now would be a great time to go. So my wife and I decided to go, and yes, I took a workshop. And the reason I mention that is that I've had a lot of comments from people about, hey, you've been in photography a long time, why would you take a workshop? I always will take workshops if I can, uh, if they work for my schedule, et cetera. If I like the instructor, if it takes me to an interesting location, and if it's a chance for me to just forget everything else in my life and just write and do photography for a week or so, it's worth doing. It's like re resetting the batteries. So there's a couple of things I did before I went to Albania. Once I decided to take the workshop, and there's four or five points here I just want to mention briefly. I decided to go to the workshop. The number one thing I did, and I've harped on this for, for quite some time now, is I did my research. I started reading and researching the history of Albania. Why was it closed off? Who was in control? What were the repercussions? What happened when it opened, etc.? The reasoning for that leads me to point number two, was that researching Albania allowed me to come up with a specific technique for the project. In this case, it was double exposures. I'd never done these before. The morning of my first day in Toronto, which is the capital, I realized that my idea of how I was going to do that was flawed, and I had to make a, a quick correction, which I did. I figured out how to do these uh, multiple exposures, and I, that is the singular thing I focused on. So the number one thing I did was my research. Number two, I determined a technique. Number three is I reduced my equipment list almost entirely. I shot the entire time with a single body and a 50, and my wife snaked my 35 in my second body, so I couldn't use it anyway. So the entire time for whatever it was, 10 or 12 days, I just shot a 50 millimeter and one camera body. That is such a relief. It's such an easy way of working because you just never have to ever think about your gear. Number four is I wrote every single day while I was there. I wrote every morning at breakfast, I wrote at night, and I wrote throughout the day. I would write down overheard conversations, I would, over, I would write down overheard quotes, and then I would write stream of consciousness journaling that I would then utilize for the actual magazine that I was making. Speaking of magazine, point number five is I designed my magazine in real time. So every single day I was editing, sequencing, and adding spreads to my publication in Blur BookWrite, utilizing the tool that I'm about to talk about. And what's great about a workshop like this for me is that Elena comes from a very different discipline of photography. She comes from fine art. I studied photojournalism. So to have someone like that look at my work and provide feedback from such a different angle is pretty, pretty eye-opening in how someone like that sees reportage work. And so we were able to sit every day with the Manage Pages tool in BookWrite and drag and drop sequences and edit this magazine in real time. So by the time I left Albania, the magazine was complete ready for upload so that when I got back, it was just a couple of days before I had this in my hand. And I still have it. I look at it all the time. It's not any sort of completed project. I wasn't in Albania long enough to really define anything in particular. It's just that it helps me get my head around what I've done, what was successful, what isn't. It helps me focus to edit, to sequence, to combine my copy and my stills. And the key to this whole thing is the Manage Pages button in Blurb BookWrite. And that is what I want to talk about now. Alrighty then, let's jump into the software and, and look at this infamous tool that I have been telling you about, the infamous button. So when you open Blur Book Right, you're going to be faced with this welcome screen. I would normally just jump into, this is my magazine here, this is my wife's here, I think we're going to take a look at hers first. But I just wanted to, for you to notice that there's a, there's a new tab here at this point uh, underneath called Your Wall Art, and if I create the 
create hit the create button here. This is new to Blurb as of a couple of weeks ago, WallArt. So just wanted to bring that to your attention. This is the classic books and magazines. But I'm going to cancel that, go back to my books, and I'm going to open up my wife's magazine. She has no idea I'm doing this. So, uh, you know, that's probably a good thing. So as you can see, this is the interface, main interface with Blurb Bookwrite. For those of you who have used this, this looks very familiar. But what I've found is that there's a lot of people using this that have forgotten about my favorite button and I want to show you. So one of the things you'll notice is all, all her spreads are over here on the left, right? So this goes from, here's her cover, and if I hit the preview button up here on the right, you'll see that's pretty cool. That's pretty pretty clean, nice, uh, funky bokeh, nighttime Tirana photograph there. I kind of like that. And if I go to my pages tab up here in the upper left, this is where all the spreads are inside the magazine. But as you can see, scrolling up and down here does not give you the most optimal view of what your entire project looks like because you're only seeing one page at a time. But let me let me blow your mind. Let me let me uh, do something that's going to be very very helpful right here, my friends. Is the manage pages button? Look what happens. Bam! This brings up a window, and I'm going to maximize this. This brings up her entire publication just like that. Now, how cool is it to be able to see, even if you had a 200-page document, you're still going to be able to see the whole thing, but it gets better. So we've got this ethereal. I'm going to bounce here. We've got her. She's starting the first page of her mag with this ethereal little uh, Amola Studio Albania with her last name on there. And uh, that's kind of cool. I like that. I don't like to give away too much on that first page, but I'm going to go back to manage pages here. I'm going to re-maximize this window because I can. And uh, she's starting... She got that ethereal image here, but then she's got someone in a black cape that's a reflection, and then she's got a human element here, which I'll, I'll, re I'll, I'll upsize these in a minute, but, and I can do that right now just for fun. We'll go like this. So this is her mag, she, black, a person in a black cape here with uh, reflected. You've got an inner city scene. You've got nature. You've got this funky abstract picture. You've got more people. You've got nature. What if... You said, well, uh, I don't like this flow. I think this, wait, no, let's not use that one. Let's use this one. Let's, what if this goes over here? So the reason I love the Manage Pages button is this: you can drag and drop your sequence. This is what Elena and I did every night at the workshop. I would lay out the sequence, and then she would come in, and she has a completely different perspective on photography from me because she is a fine art photographer. I studied photojournalism. So these are like two weather systems, right? They're cir cir circling around all the time, but they're very different. So it was really fun for me to have somebody from that space, from that genre, look at my work from an angle that I wasn't used to working at. So she might say, oh, wait, why would you, why would you start your magazine with two landscape images because people are going to look at this and go, oh, you're a, you're a landscape photographer. Well, my wife's not a landscape photographer, so that's probably not the image you want to have first. I think this is a great image to go first. And then, sure, you bounce out to nature. So you've got this weird sort of abstract picture. You've got this. And then maybe you put another, you've got a human element here, and then maybe you do another little black and white abstract. You see what I'm saying here is Altering your sequence can make and make or break the entire publication. And I have done this incorrectly at times. I've made poor decisions with sequencing and had entire projects, literally. I've had projects folded up and closed in front of my face and had someone say to me, I don't want to look at this anymore because I put one image too far forward in a project that threw off the person looking at it and they thought the entire subject story was about something it wasn't about. So... One little misstep with this. So, okay, let me close this. Let me close this, and I'll just show you, uh, I'll show you mine. So this is called Declassificar, which is declassified in Albanian. Um, I have used this as a test so many times, I have no idea what, what order these pages are in. But the same thing for me. So if I go in here, I'm going to reduce the size so you can see the whole thing. So this was my take on Albania. And when I say I used, I'm going to go back to project, when I use double exposures, this would be an example of one of the double exposures. So these two guys were in one photograph, and this boat and the landscape were in a second. So they were both made on top of one another in camera. And so I had to sharpen my technique on how to do this while in the field. And it's a little tricky, and you realized, I realized after about two days, I got it down. I figured out how to do this. Then I would add little quotes that I overheard during the day that I would write down in my journal. So let me go back to project. Let me go back to manage pages. And you will see here, 
my entire sequence. And again, I'm not entirely sure what order this is in now because I've, I've used this as a demo so many times. But what I did was start with a sort of an ethereal thing. That's a self-portrait in a restaurant window. I'm writing in my journal. I snapped this picture, also made it a double exposure. Then I move into the sequence with uh, basically this picture, this double, and then this quote, which I thought is great. This is Hosha, the dictator, and this is a very dictatorial thing. I'm just sort of setting the stage. Then I have a page that's a landscape with um, a body of copy. And this is an example of what I would do in my journal, where I would write something that I overheard during the day, and then I would turn it into a simple single image with a giant oversized body of copy. But again, let's go back here. And the key point I want to make with this is that this is a tool that allows you to drag and drop your sequence. This, this in itself is worth using this program and this tool because sequencing is the lost art of bookmaking, in my opinion. It's the, it's the part of the process that I find a lot of bewilderment with, and people don't seem to give it the attention required. They'll focus on the imagery and the edit, which obviously is important, but the sequence, the order in which you put the images is absolutely critical. So again, you have to be very careful. I'm not starting with a landscape because I'm not a landscape photographer, and it's a mix of copy, it's a mix of double exposures, and then it's a mix of images that I think are strong enough to stand on their own, like this. So that is what this tool is about. Do not forget about Manage Pages. This will give you a leg up on your sequence and a leg up on making your book. Thanks for taking the time to look at this tool. If you haven't used BookWrite software, it's pretty darn good. And that Manage Pages tool, as you can see, is a very strategic tool that can make the key element of sequencing your project much easier. So I'll be back at some point with other tools. Until then, go make some pictures.